now that I have a first approximation alignment, I'd like to see if I can perfect it on the actual cross-section surface before taking the final image. So the principle behind that first approximation alignment is that we're using a reduced window which allows us to scan at a reasonably long dwell time, something like three or in this case five microseconds, gives us a pretty clear image where we can see some of that texture and also gives us a relatively live refresh rate. It's refreshing maybe twice per second, which allows us as we're changing the focus or astigmatism, we can see those changes in real time. Now the problem is, especially when I'm doing astigmatism, I can move the mouse several inches on the screen and it's hard for me to decide exactly where the, the perfect place is to leave it. So what we're going to do in this video is take advantage of a longer dwell time, something like 20 microseconds for instance, and what that'll do is give us an even clearer image of the texture that we're using for our alignment and then by using what's called the alignment rectangle under the window you put this alignment rectangle on this green dotted line we'll be able to make comparisons using using the visual cues on the screen and our mouse as we slide back and forth and that will allow us to even more precisely tune the focus and astigmatism okay so how to do that, let's go back to our five microseconds and I'm going to click out of the reduced window and go over to my cross-section surface and I think we're going to use this feature here that'll give us a, a nice chance to see some rounded and sharp edges for our alignment. Now when I do this I want to make sure I'm at a reasonable uh, magnification or as I like to refer to it the horizontal field width as expressed in this uh, units of length. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and uh, in this ultra high resolution mode in immersion mode we'll get our best alignment somewhere b between an HFW of about one and one and a half uh, microns. So maybe I'll go to about 1.25. I'm going to be using shift left click as beam shift from time to time in this video to reposition my image rather than double clicking to move the stage. And now what I'm going to do is turn that reduced window back on. I can run through my first approximation again on this feature, try to get focus and astigmatism. But again, it's really hard to know exactly if I've gotten it right or not. So what we'll do now is slow down the dwell time back to 20 microseconds. And rather than scanning live, however, we're going to integrate one frame at a time. So now every time that we grab a, an image using the pause button or the F6 key on the keyboard, uh, we'll get a nice clear image and it'll allow us to evaluate how we're doing with our alignment. So the principle now is using the center cross and the alignment rectangle edges, and maybe I'll grab a slightly longer dwell time image for a background that allow us to see the, the rectangle a little bit better. Uh, I'm also going to beam shift this feature away from the center cross. Okay, so if I put the reduced window around it now, we can we can get to work. So, with the way this technique works is we start with the with say focus at the center cross, and we can move all the way over to our alignment rectangle edge here and F6 to grab a frame. And then the idea is we want to compare that to focus that's equidistant from the center cross over here on the left side of the alignment rectangle, F6 to grab that frame, and try to evaluate was it better or worse than the previous image. Now it's hard to compare all the way to the left versus all the way to the right for focus, especially at this high magnification. So instead, often for focus, what I like to do is, again, start in the middle and then maybe move only a couple centimeters to the right and compare that to a couple centimeters to the left and try to ask myself which side is better. So again, comparing that left side to this right side, it looks like the left side is a little better. So that means that the optimal adjustment is somewhere to the left of the center cross. So I'll move it just a couple of millimeters and then grab a frame. And then we can iterate the process again. So compare about two centimeters to the right versus two centimeters to the left. And in that case, they look about the same. So if they look the same, I can go back to the center and I've finished my focus adjustment. 
Now we can repeat the same process with astigmatism. So shift right click to get a four way arrow and then I can release the shift key. I'll compare the right side to the left side. And you can see it was much better on the right. So if it's much better, I'll move the mouse uh, an appreciable distance to the right of the center cross and release that. And I just made an adjustment of a couple inches. And then we can iterate the process again. So we compare the right to the left. Still a little bit better on the right. And we, com we repeat it again, comparing the right to the left. And now those look about the same. So if they're about the same, you go back to the center and we're done with our X astigmatism. And then we can compare the Y astigmatism looking at the top versus the bottom. And it's better on the bottom, so we'll adjust towards the bottom, release, and then repeat, compare the bottom to the top. So still a little better on the bottom release it there and continue the process. So you, you continue this until the astigmatism looks the same on the top versus the bottom and the left versus the right. So now it's fixed with the Y astigmatism. And then I'll usually check the focus once more at the end. Just compare a couple centimeters to the right versus a couple centimeters to the left. Just be sure you're moving an equidistant amount. And now we're making adjustments on the order of millimeters, so we're really splitting hairs, but this is the way that you'll get yourself a perfect alignment. And so there I'm happy with my focus, and I'm happy with my astigmatism. So that concludes how to perfect your alignment using the alignment rectangle technique. In the next video, I'll show how to take the final image.